We at MoDOT, we have about 19 million people who visit our welcome centers and rest areas every year all throughout Missouri. And one of our goals, as you will see in the few that we build in the recent years and those that will be upgraded and changed over the next few years, is to try to make those much more uh, friendly to the travelers to get out, stretch their legs, let their learn a little bit about the region, um, and make them safer so that they can get out and not quite so tired behind the wheel. We are, as you have seen, if you've been inside at all, as you can see from the beautiful architectural and artistic elements out here, each of our new welcome centers has a theme. This one's theme is actually twofold. It is both the major earthquake, the pneumatic earthquake, as there are many displays inside, and the seismology graphs, as you see out here, and also the Mississippian culture. Um, we have culture from both the origins, back from the Osage Nation, all the way through the, the civil rights world up through today. So please take time and take a look at all of those wonderful displays that are inside, and, most, and many will be permanent for everyone who visits this area to learn a little bit more about the people and the area. Uh, this particular Welcome Center and the one at Haytai, which will be opening later today, uh, were funded through grants from our reimbursement programs from federal funds. They cost around $11.5 million, and part of those were through the ERA funds, which was the Economic Recovery Act, and they're all through Transportation Enhancement Funds. So we are very thrilled to have received those and able to use those to be in these beautiful buildings and traveler destinations to the state of Missouri. Um, I'm going to give a few thank yous, and then we have several speakers, as you can see from your program, so I'm going to make it quick and get off. Um, this Welcome Center would not have been able to be built and designed without great benefit and help from many people who gave us both background on the region, on the earthquakes, and also did the design and construction uh, of this wonderful facility. Uh, those organizations include Earthquake Insight, Osage Nation, Seismological Society of America, located in Memphis, the USGS, Incorporated Research Institutes for Seismology, the City of Marston, RL Persons, who actually built this wonderful site, RDG Dockless Art Studio, Crawford Murphy and Telly Incorporated Design Consultant, CDG Engineers, Architects and Planners, a Design Consultant, the Missouri Department of Natural Resources, the Missouri Department of Conservation, and of course our wonderful MoDOT team who helped pull it all together. So I want to thank each and every one of your organizations and all of the folks represented here for all of their assistance. Without further ado, I am going to say that uh, I'm going to start with the speakers, and first on our list, of course, is the Honorable Terry Swinger. What a beautiful facility. Uh, thank you for everybody that had something to do with this, with this to make it possible. The funding from the federal government, all the work that has gone into this. A big industry in Missouri is tourism, and, and I, can, I, I really feel like this is going to be a very positive for the tourism. I would like to say that when I first got elected in 03, that the number one complaint I got from everybody was, well, not everybody, but the number one complaint I got was about roads. And there's been a lot of things. Mr. Mickey was on the was on the uh, Highway Commission nearly all of this time up until now. A uh, significant ballot initiative was passed to do a couple of things. One of them was the bonding issue. One of them was to uh, a, a gas tax that was being used for other things, but go specifically for roads. So MoDOT not only has, has worked hard on this facility, the one in Haytai, uh, Mr. Mickey had uh, maps in his office that my wife had gone and looked at, but, but I've, I've waited to look at this, and this is so much more impressive than I thought was even possible. It is such an asset for us to have this in our area, and I appreciate all the, everybody that was involved in it, appreciate MoDOT's work in particular. Thank you very much. Next on your program, you will see uh, uh, Representative um, Honorable Steve Hodges. I have not seen him here yet this morning. He must have gotten called away on other business. So uh, I am gonna jump on down to, um, New Madrid County Presiding Commissioner, the Honorable Clyde Haas.
Terry said, this was a beautiful facility and it is a beautiful day and I'm certainly glad to see this is a beautiful day because of all the rain and inclement weather we've had in the boot hills. You know, as you travel through, well, let me back up. I, I would like to welcome you on behalf of my other two fellow commissioners uh, to New Madrid County. And uh, we're just glad to have this facility located in New Madrid County. You know, as, as people travel throughout the state and throughout the nation, in fact, and they stop in a facility like this, I'm sure they'll say this is a state-of-the-art facility that they don't see in every state. And they may decide to move to New Madrid County and uh, buy a home or maybe open a business. And after all, well, and I, and I will include Pemiscot County since Mr. Mickey and, uh, and uh, our representative uh, rep represent uh, Pemiscot County. And I think, I think Terry represents part of New Madrid County because if there's ever a light on in the county, Terry's here. And we appreciate that, Terry. But, you know, they may decide to stop off here and uh, come back. And after all, where would be a better place to live than in southeast Missouri? So... But uh, really, this is an outstanding facility, and like I say, we're just glad to have it here, and glad to see each of you here, and uh, like I say, on behalf of the county, we'd like to make you feel welcome. Thank you. Next on our agenda is former Highway Commissioner Dwayne Mickey. Good morning. When I first saw the plans as they were being proposed and information was being gathered for the Marston and also the Pemscott County or Haytown, Missouri uh, Welcome Center, it, it, it simply blew me away because I was not expecting the amount of devotion of time and effort of design work that went in to try to develop a theme about Southeast Missouri as a part of what they were going to build within the what they were going to build within the building or within the location. Let me tell you something. That's a that was a MoDOT senior management staff decision about as you go into various areas of the state, and we all have traveled and and have seen how much of a difference there is throughout the state, and when you come to Southeast Missouri, it is so unique. And to have travel centers built with that theme is absolutely unbelievable, and I do hope everyone appreciates that fact. Secondly, let's make it perfectly clear, the funding of the $11.5 million plus dollars that has been spent in this project and the project at Haytide, those are funds that could not be spent for road construction. Please understand that. How many times have I been to the coffee shop and I, I hear how much money we're spending on uh, the welcome centers and no one seems to understand that you, you have to have these welcome centers, no question about it, but we did not take money out of the road fund in order to build it. Those are specially allocated funding distributions that are made specifically specifically for enhancements along the transportation routes that we have. Clear your mind up on that. That did not happen. We were very careful about how that money was spent and the fact that it only could be spent for this type of a, a transportation enhancement. Thank you very much for coming. It's a, it's a great day and in the many years to come, Claude, all the rest of you, this is going to be such a nice stop-off point for people to understand this region of the state. Thanks again. Carol, yeah, thank you. Uh, next on our agenda is uh, Mike Marshall from the Delta Regional Authority. Mike, you're Nicole? No, I'm sorry, I didn't see Mike either. Uh, the next up is Steve Duke from the Boot Hill Regional Planning Commission and also retired from MoDOT, so Steve and I go way back. Thank 
Thank you, Cheryl. Good morning. Uh, appreciate the opportunity to uh, talk about this facility a little bit. Uh, I'd like to congratulate uh, MoDOT and all of the uh, staff on a, what a wonderful design this is. It's beyond any expectations that I've ever uh, envisioned of a rest area to be. And uh, also to uh, R.L. Parsons for uh, a wonderful job on the construction of this facility. It's, uh, it's really a nice facility. It's, uh, I, I go, go back and think about the uh, movie on the Field of Dreams. You say, build it and they will come. Well, I, I believe you'll see uh, this facility, all, uh, most of the parking slots will probably be three-fourths full uh, 24 hours a day. But anyway, it is a great facility. The uh, culture of not only New Madrid County, but also of the Boot Hill region is on display. And, and entering the facility is like going through in a museum tour. And uh, I just congratulate MoDOT on, on, a, on a wonderful job and R.L. Parsons uh, for, the, for the work they did on the contract. Thank you. Next up, I would like to introduce Mr. Patrick McEwen from the Incorporated Research Institute for Seismology. Ah, looks like I lost you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there's a myth that earthquakes are more prevalent during certain types of weather, uh, which of course is a myth, not true. Uh, but if I was to pick the type of weather that uh, I'd want to have during an earthquake, uh, this certainly is better than what we had yesterday. The uh, yes. thunderous downpour I drove in for two hours <laughs> from Memphis. Um, so it's great to see uh, the weather cooperating uh, with the grand opening here. Um, Iris uh, was uh, honored to be given the opportunity to work with MDOT to uh, install some educational um, exhibitry in the rest uh, welcome center here. Um, it's, a, it's a wonderful location to have sort of an educational uh, opportunity like this because folks are driving by constantly and they stop in and you've got a chance for folks to uh, maybe learn something about the area. Um, we couldn't have installed the exhibits without the help of lots of groups. Uh, the USGS, uh, Siri from the University of Memphis, uh, UNAVCO, EarthScope, and funding for the exhibitry was provided by the National Science Foundation. Um, IRIS, uh, the Incorporated Research Institutions for Seismology, is a consortium of 100 universities that are all doing geophysics research. Uh, we manage the uh, seismology data collected by uh, numerous uh, geology projects, uh, but we also do education outreach, and this is a perfect opportunity for us to uh, do some broader impacts with uh, education outreach um, here. Uh, the largest geophysics project ever done um, is called EarthScope, and EarthScope, one part of it is called the US Array, and it is uh, installing a very dense array of seismometers across the continental US to learn more about uh, North America. And those seismometers are now being installed in Missouri as we speak. Uh, about half the state is covered. Um, and for the two years that those seismometers are in Missouri, you will be no further away than 25 miles from a seismology station. Um, so we hope to learn a lot more about the New Madrid area. And this is a great place to have a, an educational facility because most of the folks driving by here probably don't live here. And they probably don't realize that the largest earthquakes in the continental US occurred here 200 years ago and they could happen again. Um, so you have a chance to not only learn about uh, the New Madrid area, uh, but also learn about uh, some uh, geophysics that happened here also. Uh, the exhibit itself um, consists of a lot of little short nuggets. Um, when you have somebody in a museum, and especially in a welcome center like this, you don't have their attention for very long. Uh, maybe a minute or two while the family is using the restroom or getting a snack, uh, they might have a chance to glance over at the exhibitry and maybe learn a fact or two. So we've designed all the um, exhibits to be very short with a question and answer. So hopefully uh, someone will come in, be intrigued by a question, walk over, read the answer, and maybe learn one fact before they leave. Um, you'll also notice that uh, each of the sections has, has um, the uh, 2D QR codes that you can scan with your smartphone. So if you are interested in learning more about it, you can very quickly scan it with your smartphone. They'll take you to a website, and uh, you can learn more as you drive off down the road uh, to other places in Missouri. Uh, and uh, the um, live touch screens uh, actually have live data coming in that updates as you uh, interact with the screen. So uh, we've got it set now to the uh, seismological station in Portersville, so you can learn what earthquakes are happening locally um, as you stop in. 
Um, and also, Iris really couldn't pass up the opportunity to uh, install an exhibit somewhere where we had the chance to compare the energy released by different magnitude earthquakes to the energy released by how many toilets you flush. So, if you're curious to know how many toilets you have to flush to equal a magnitude 6 earthquake compared to a magnitude 7 earthquake, stop in and stare at the exhibit. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, see, that alone will be worth every teenager and child's interest uh, college student that I know. So, uh, next up uh, is Mr. Jerry Pruitt from uh, Department of Natural Resources Geological Survey. He's the program director. Thank you. I'm excited to be here this morning. This is a nice facility. Um, you know, I stand here, as I was introduced, representing um, as a program director for the Geological Survey of Missouri. I represent geology in Missouri. To us, this is very exciting to have a theme that, um, that actually focuses on one of the events that's geologically connected uh, that occurred in the past. 1811, um, when these events started, um, I look back and, and 42 years later, through the, um, through the President of the United States and his office, they allocated funds to develop the Geological Survey for the state of Missouri in 1853. We have been collecting information uh, about the geology of, of this fine state since then. Our geologists have been working hard and we continue to do that. Um, geology, that word actually means the study of the earth. People have an innate uh, interest in what happens around them, uh, whether it be weather-related, uh, ground-related earthquakes, volcanoes, what's occurring, and how this world changes. It controls us, we really don't control it, and we want to know what's going on and what may be coming down the road. This facility is set as a marker along this great highway coming through our state to uh, educate people on exactly those things, what occurs, what has happened, what can happen, the magnitude and how it can affect our lives. It's really interesting. I just wanted to say thank you to those who uh, have been very helpful. We coordinated, our staff coordinated with the people here with MoDOT to get the information correct uh, and adequate in this facility. It turned out wonderful. It's a beautiful day and I hope everybody enjoys this for years to come. Thank you. Um, next on our agenda is Ms. Phyllis Steckel from the Earthquake Institute, er, Earthquake Insight LLC. Sorry. Good morning. This is an absolute thrill for those of us who have been involved in earthquake education and earthquake outreach in the central U.S. We've decided that this facility is probably going to reach more people than 10 or 15 of us could ever do in the other programs we are working on. Uh, I'd like you to just think back about 200 years ago what this area looked like then. Um, it, it looked really different. It was totally forested. There was no open space. Uh, travel was the river. So New Madrid was there in 1811 and 1812, and it was essentially the rest stop along the Mississippi River between St. Louis and New Orleans. It was the largest town between those two cities. Um, in 1811-1812, a series of large earthquakes began, uh, at least three that were in the magnitude mid-7s, hundreds, thousands of aftershocks that went on for months. This area was very much disrupted. Uh, all types of life uh, styles of the era was disrupted and, and interrupted, and many people moved away. Um, we have to remember this, uh, and this particular facility will help us reach how many million did you say come here every 11 million was it? 19 million people visit all of our sites. Yeah, all of them. So it's got, it's got to be several million, two, three million maybe stop here annually. I, that's fantastic. Um, and this type of information will definitely help us raise awareness. And I've always thought that earthquakes in a way are sort of like sex. Because as soon as you say the word or you hear the word, people want to tune in and see what you're talking about. And so when you have earthquakes plastered on the wall of the rest area, people will want to learn more about them. So thank you, MoDOT, for taking the lead on this. This is a wonderful facility, and you've done a lot for the effort with this facility. Thank you. Uh, and our last speaker for
paper this morning is Mr. Daryl Martin from Lincoln University, <laughs> who has a very unique project located inside our facility. Good morning and thank you. It's an opportunity to be here and to uh, be part of this project. My original thought was the building across the street, and it all started down in Southeast, but actually in Springfield with uh, Steve Herman. We were taking a class together, and I was talking about having a knitting museum set up and talk about the Booth Hill history. And so there was a few calls made, and Cheryl called, and all of a sudden all calls started coming in. So the display you see inside is from the initial conversation with Steve, and I said to myself, how things work out when you could just actually just start having conversation, things could materialize. So what you see inside are going to be some of the permanent displays in there, and it kind of cover a variation about the history down here in the Boot Hill. So I hope you take the opportunity to look at it and to uh, read some of the great history that's going on down here in uh, Southeast Missouri. So uh, if you have any questions, uh, just ask me or you can ask Scott. He did a lot of the work on a lot of the projects. So I want to thank MoDOT, thank you Cheryl and Steve and the MoDOT family. <laughs> Special thanks myself. Uh, as Mr. Mickey said, we have, uh, we're very fortunate. Our senior management and executive team have led us to be able to utilize those specially designated funds for enhancing the transportation system from the feds. And, and by doing that, we've allowed to have this facility here and the one in Haiti. So our executive team deserves a lot of credit for that foresight and looking forward. Our caretakers on this project, I have Tim Richmond here who has been our project manager and he has led us through the themes and trials and tribulations of pulling this all together. He handed off to Brian Holt, who I saw here a second ago, who is our, there he is, who's our resident engineer who took over the care and construction of helping get this built correctly. And I saw a few minutes ago Harvey Cooper from the uh, Sheltered Workshop, who will be the caretaker for after it's built. The Sheltered Workshop is the folks who take care of it, make sure it's clean, and all of that so visitors can feel comfortable and welcome here. So thank you all for attending. At this moment, I am going to ask all of the speakers to please come forward, and we're going to do the official ribbon cutting. 